and I will be teaching you organizational behavior, which is the subject in degree engineering in semester four for all branches. Now, in our first video, we talked about what is organizational behavior, how it is helpful to employees and leaders to work effectively, and what is its need and importance in the organizational world. Today, in continuation with the first chapter, that is the focus and purpose of organizational behavior, we will be discussing two topics, nature and scope of organizational behavior and contributing field to organizational behavior. So to start with, first of all, let us see what is the nature of OB. Now before we start understanding what is the nature and scope of OB, first of all, why we are studying what is the nature of OB. We are studying this because in order to understand this subject or in order to be able to apply this subject in our practical life, we must first understand what it is all about or what would be its nature. For example, suppose somebody tells you the word maths, then you understand that it is something about calculating. And then further, your mind also understands where all it will be helpful. But since organizational behavior is a completely new subject over here, first of all, let us understand what is the nature of OB. So, first, OB is a separate field of study and not a discipline only. Now, when we say that a particular subject belongs to a particular discipline, then its scope is narrow. But when we say that it is a field of study, that means it has so many different aspects. So similarly, organizational behavior actually has many aspects. And that is why we can say that it is a completely separate field of study. Secondly, OB is an applied science. Now, first of all, why it is called a science? Because in science, we do research and experiments and through the results of those experiments, we prove certain facts. Similarly, organizational behavior theories are the result of certain researches and they can be applied in the practical life. And that is why we can say OB is an applied science. Thirdly, OB is a science as well as an art. Now why it is called an art? It is called an art because it involves the human behavior. And whenever we talk about anything which is related to human behavior, human emotions or human thinking, then how to deal with them involves art. Like we say that how to deal with people is an art because it requires a lot of creativity. So having said that, we already know that OB is a science, so it has some proven theories. But in order to apply those proven theories, the person who is applying those theories need to become creative because every human being is unique. Every organization has unique culture, unique environment, and every situation is also unique. So given these theories, a person will have to add the creativity also. So that is why we can say OB is a science as well as an art. Next, we can say that OB is a normative science. Normative science is the study of information which is developed, presented or interpreted based on the assumed, usually unstated, preferred outcome. That means that you first assume what outcome you need and then based on that you study the information and then you act upon that information so that you get that outcome. So that is why even OB is a normative science because we behave in such a manner so that we can influence other people's behavior and 
get desired outcomes from them and that is why it is normative. OB has a humanistic approach. Now very obvious that something which deals with human beings has a humanistic approach. Now we all know that there are so many organizations nowadays particularly because of a lot of competition people have forgotten the humanistic approach and leaders in order to get their work done faster have forgotten it. So for attaining the long term goals to develop an environment in an organization which is really positive and to get the productivity which is maximum we need to use the humanistic approach and that is why OB deals with humanistic approach or we can say that OB has a humanistic approach. Next OB is a total system approach. Now why we are telling that OB is a total system approach because when we apply the principles of organizational behavior to a particular organization that means that we are trying to influence the behavior of the employees of that organization. The moment the behavior and the attitude of the people in the organization changes, the use of the other resources, that is the finances, the systems, the policies, etc. also change. And that is why we can say that when we apply OB to an organization, we are actually applying those principles to each and every part of the organization. It will affect finances also, profits, relationships, everything. And that is why we can say OB is a total system approach. Lastly, OB is interdisciplinary in nature. Now, as earlier I said that because it includes the knowledge of different things and it is a field of study, definitely it has different disciplines and each and every discipline is actually related to each other and that is why we can say OB has interdisciplinary approach. It takes the knowledge from different disciplines. So let us see what kind of interdisciplinary approach it has or let us see what are the different contributing fields of study which contributes their knowledge to the organizational behavior. The first field of study that contributes to OB is psychology. Next, sociology. Then, the social psychology. Also, anthropology, political science and economics also. So, all these things, psychology, sociology, social psychology, anthropology, political science, and economics contribute to organizational behavior. So let us see one by one how do they contribute. So to begin with first contributing field is psychology. Now when we are talking about human behavior then definitely we have to talk about what is going on in the mind of a human being and which is the field of psychology. Now what all different things will affect the productivity of an employee in an organization which relates to the psychology. So let us see what are different aspects of psychology which affects the work life. They are the learning, how a person learns, the perceptions a person carries about self and others, one's emotions, every person has different emotions for different things, the motivation factor, the training, Decision-making, job satisfaction, performance appraisal, work design, job stress, attitude of every person because they are different and selection techniques. All of these actually influence the work in an organization and they are all the part of the psychology. Next, sociology is another field which contributes to OB. Now what is sociology? So actually sociology deals with the society. It is the study of society, groups, how people behave with each other. So points like communication between the group, how they behave in the group, how their group behavior changes, 
or how a person's behavior changes when the person is in the group. Then there may be the inter intergroup behavior or um, there is an exchange, there is a group structure, the organizational culture, change, power and conflict. All these things which deal when which deal with things when people are in a group. Next, the social psychology. Now, what is social psychology? Social psychology is the study of change in the behavior of a person with an outside influence. So it talks about the behavioral changes, it talks about the attitudinal changes, it talks about the conflict resolutions, it talks about the group processes, then group decision making, the communication within the group, etc. So basically, it talks about the kind of change which comes because of because of the either a real presence or a perceived presence of another person. Anthropology actually talks about the effect or the influence of the outside environment. So it can talk about the different uh, influences from the outside world on the organizational culture, on the organizational structure and it also talks about on the thinking of the entire organization as a whole. So here the influence of the outside environment on the human behavior within the organization is discussed. Then political science is also very important contributing field to organizational behavior because where, wherever there are human beings and wherever they work together in a group, politics is bound to happen. Politics means it talks about the power centers. Who will be powerful over others or who can influence others. It talks about the conflict resolution between people and it also talks about the allocation of power within the organization. Lastly, economics is also the contributing field to OB. Now, how economics is the contributing field to OB? Now, it is the analysis of the transaction cost which helps in deciding the organizational structure. And because of the organizational structure, because there is a particular hierarchy, there is a different kind of environment and there is a different kind of communication that happens in the organization. And due to that, it will again influence the human behavior. So ultimately, even the economics or the transaction cost will also influence OB. So, I hope you have understood the nature and scope of organizational behavior. And by now, we know that there are so many different fields which actually contributes to OB. Or, we are going to study everything from these different fields in organizational behavior. Thank you.